Hello and welcome to Dream Space from Factory International with me, Gemma Kearney. I'm a broadcaster, an art lover and most definitely a daydreamer. And to be honest, I've always been a bit obsessed with the power that our own minds have. The moment that we let ourselves go and make space for the freedom to conjure up whole new worlds. So in every episode of Dream Space, we're inviting a special guest to take over our minds and our imaginations with whatever they want creating their perfect lineup of art, music, inspiration, and more. Join us as we push the boundaries of what is possible and create new visions together, asking the question, what kind of art does the world need right now? Inventing tomorrow together. There's no limit to dreams, so open your mind, get relaxed, and let's get dreaming. Today, we are dreaming with Nabia Iqbal. Nabia is a musician, DJ, writer and broadcaster whose work spans genres and disciplines including collaborating with visual artists such as Wolfgang Tillmans, composing music for the Turner Prize and curating the multidisciplinary Brighton Festival this year. Her latest album, Dreamer, reflects on Nabia's experiences during the early months of 2020 and uses this intimate lens as a meditation on personal identity and grief. For Factory International, Nabia is working on an upcoming project called Factory Works, a new audio artwork in the form of a vinyl record, created in collaboration with the artist Neville Gabby and some of the construction workers and manufacturers involved in the creation of Aviva Studios. This is Nabia Iqbal's Dream Space. Nabiha Iqbal, I'm very excited to be transported into a new dream space. I feel like the real world feels a little bit loud right now. What can we see or feel? What is my first impression whilst I'm here? Well, I'd want my dream space to be in a beautiful natural setting. And um, the first thing that comes into my mind when I think about special experiences that I've had myself in nature I think a lot about this one time when I was in Kyoto in Japan and it was the summer, but it was raining and it was that kind of like warm, still rain that you feel that's very particular of that season. And I stumbled across this old temple that was quite off the beaten track and there were no, there were really like hardly any other people there. And then um, standing in the grounds and all I could hear was the sound of the rain, the light rain like on all the trees in the forest where I was. And then there was a hut there and out of the hut I could hear someone playing the shakuhachi, which is a Japanese bamboo flute. And that sound of the instrument in the setting where I was standing against the backdrop of the rain It just transported me in a way that I can't really explain, but it just stopped me in my tracks. And then I just started crying because of the beauty of the whole scenario. I was just so happy that I got to experience that. And so maybe I'd have that as the starting point of my dream scenario. Like everyone would start there and go through that same experience and feel what I felt. And then we'd move into a different space because I can't have it raining the whole time in my dream space. That would just be the introduction, yeah. Beautiful. So we've experienced this Japanese soundscape and kind of spiritual moment in collective and move through, we transition. Where are we now? We transition from there into, I guess, the main setting for my dream space. And for that, I'm imagining to, again, be in a really beautiful, natural surrounding and to be somewhere that feels ancient and mystical. Like, you know, the history of the ground that you're standing on goes back thousands of years and carries with it like a certain kind of energy. So for that, I'd say we should be in Egypt. I mean, I love history and I'm really, really interested in ancient Egypt. And when I went there, and visited a lot of the old archaeological sites, I really felt that, like there's a special feeling. So for the setting, I'd say that we'd be somewhere out of the city, like along the Nile, and it would be 
in an, an oasis alongside the Nile where we've got like lush green date palms and coconut palms all around us and the sky would be a perennial sunset. I'd freeze it at the moment where, you know, when you're looking at the sunrise or the sunset and the sky just feels so alive with all the different colours like pinks and purples and oranges and it just feels like it's all coated in a layer of gold as well. My favourite sky, I love a peach psychedelic sky. Exactly. So I'd freeze it on that and, and it would just stay like that. And it would be like a warm, really warm evening where it just felt comfortable to be wearing whatever you wanted to wear. And there's a light breeze and the sound of the river lapping against the shore and some beautiful birds singing in the trees. That's where we'd end up after the, the rainy Japanese temple. Once you've gone through the yeah. portal. <laughs> How do we get through that portal? Is there anything in particular that it feels like? <laughs> Can I click your heels? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> any way you like, any way you like, yeah. So when making music and fusing the different disciplines that you do as an act of creation, is a journey element important for the audience that's experiencing it? Like, does any kind of transcendental or transportation vibe come into how you make as a process well for me i feel that the whole point of music is that it transports you and you know everyone has their own relationship to it to you know a piece of music in particular i mean when i'm making music one of my main aims is to be able to create something that the listener can really connect with emotionally and that it will take them on some kind of journey or connect them to something that they haven't been in touch with for a long time or weren't expecting you know just something that's deeper than just the sort of surface level listening I mean everyone's got their own tastes and stuff but for me like my worst nightmare would be for my music to just fade into the background so even if it's just one person who listens and connects with it and feels like the music takes them somewhere then I feel like my job is done and even for myself, when I make music, when I reach that kind of like creative epiphany moment where I feel like I've found an idea that's actually going to grow and become a song, then for me as well, that experience is, is always transportative. And like, it's like a meditation. Sometimes it just kind of takes over your mind and your body in quite interesting ways. Mm, so here we are, we're going in. What can we expect initially? Can we smell anything? What would you smell? Just like beautiful incense, I'd say. I'm sure the ancient Egyptians had some really nice things that they burnt for the smell. Maybe it's a bit like the bahur that you find in Arabic countries now across the Middle East, something like that. So yeah, just like quite a heavy, woody fragrance. And we have the ability to stop time. So you mentioned the idea of the idyllic moment of a sunset, but we are able to create that sunset limitlessly. It's not going to be down within 40 minutes. How long would the experience last if I could stop that sunset just for us to enjoy for as long as we wanted? Oh, for as long as we can, for as long as this dream scenario carries on. You just want to like freeze that most beautiful moment of the sunset where the sky lights up with all the different colours and you feel like that's what the sky must look like in heaven or something, you know? And it's the sky that you see in paintings of sunsets. So yeah, we just freeze that forever. And is there anything from your own repertoire that we can hear in terms of sound? Well, you know, if it's a dream scenario, I don't think I would have my own music playing because maybe other musicians can relate to this, but listening to your own music, for me anyway, it doesn't always feel so relaxing or anything because I'm just listening to it with a really critical ear and always... Um, yeah, just kind of over-analyzing everything, even after the songs are finished. <laughs> and for me, there's m 
way more music out there that I'd rather listen to. So, yeah, I think we'd leave my stuff on the back burner. Maybe someone else might choose it for their dream scenario. But I'd just go with, um, like, my number one musical hero, Michael Jackson. So he'd be there, like, singing, maybe recreating the uh, music video for Remember the Time since we're in Egypt. Um, yeah, we just hear him singing that song. It's one of my favourite Michael Jackson songs. And why Michael Jackson out of anybody? Even now, there's just n- there's no one else in musical history that e- that comes close to Michael Jackson in terms of like his talent and his artistry and his commitment to music and the way that one person can influence pop culture for generations. There's no one else who's done that, and. Yeah, that I find that like so moving. And for me, my earliest musical memory is Michael Jackson. And that was my first musical obsession. So if anyone was going to ask me about my dream scenario, the first thing I would say was that, okay, Michael Jackson needs to be there. Okay, so who else are we going to get there? Is there anyone else getting ready to jam and play us a few tracks or is at least enjoying the atmosphere? Well, yeah, there would definitely be some other musical picks since that's my favourite thing. So I'd have Jimi Hendrix, Bob Dylan, maybe, as long as, like, I think he would be cool to hang out with. I mean, yeah, I would love to meet him. So let's say, like, Bob Dylan, Jimi Hendrix, Bob Marley, for sure, Madonna, Jeff Buckley, 100%. And he would also be there as my boyfriend. (laughs) Because I really fancy him. (laughs) So Jeff is, isn't even singing, he's just there as you're like, No, he'll your sing man. to me. <laughs> He'd be there just to like serenade me, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and what can we sit on or be amongst in terms of by design in this dream space? Are we encouraged to lounge? Are we standing and dancing? Are there different zones, different areas on this riverbank, on the edge of the Nile? I'd say a bit of both because, I mean, dancing is one of the most fun things to do, especially if the music's good. And obviously the music will be good if MJ's there. So we definitely have a dance floor area. But then also, why not lounge? And I guess, like, if we're there by the river in the palm trees, it'd be nice to have a lot of hammocks. Just, like, the most comfortable things to lie on. Bean bags, cushions... A 70s conversation pit has also been brought up during the recording of the series of Dream Space. Well, I think then if I have to choose like dream furniture for this place, I would go to one of my favourite spots in London, which is Alfie's Antique Market. Because I always go in there and just fantasise about all the amazing furniture that they've got in there and what I would have if I had a dream house. So I would just go there and pick things out. And they have loads of amazing mid-century furniture. And I think a lot of things that would fit in the sort of ancient Egyptian slash Blade Runner aesthetic. (laughs) So just, yeah, I'd go there and pick some stuff out. This is sounding cool. Are there any other activities that we can engage in as well as kind of obvious festival type stuff? I mean, it's not obvious. You've resurrected people from the dead. So it, this is definitely a surrealist space. But can we do anything else? I think we'd need to have some amazing food there. So that would be, you know, just being able to eat the best food you'll ever eat in your life. And I'd have my grandma as the chef. I mean, I love so many different types of food, but I do think that Pakistani food is my favorite. That's where my family's from. And every time I go back there, it's just like, you know, when you're in a place where the food culture is so ancient and goes back thousands of years and they put so much care and love and attention and knowledge into every dish they make. And that's how I feel with my grandma. And I feel like whenever she cooks a dish, there's like, that special knowledge of flavour and nutrition and everything that's just passed down from like generation to generation to generation and you can't just recreate that. So I'd have her cooking us the best food. Can you give me some examples of some of the dishes? Well, she makes really good chicken kebabs and potato cutlets and the best aubergine and biryani and just like all the different vegetable dishes she makes and then also 
She made really good fish as well, like fried fish, but with loads of masala on it. Oh, it's just the best. So all of those things. And also I love her omelettes as well, the best. No one can make an omelette like my grandma. <laughs> so I'd ask her to just make us loads of those too. <laughs> so we're eating omelettes. We're having some delicious biryani. Jeff Buckley's looking great on your arm. Yeah, <laughs> Michael exactly. Jackson is singing in the distance. I know. Um, who else would be there in terms of, would it be multi-generational? Your grandma's doing the cooking. Is it for families? Is it for your mates? Like you can choose. Anything can happen. Anything goes. I mean, in terms of like who'd be attending it as guests, yeah, it would just be all my family and all my friends, just all the people that I love and care about so that we could all just experience the dream scenario together. And in terms of, like other guests or like, you know, like special guests. I was thinking about it before and just thinking how all my musical idols, they're all men and that's just how it is. Although Madonna would also be there because I would love to speak to her about her experiences. But then I was like, damn, I need to balance it out a little bit. So I'd invite three iconic queens from history. I'd have Cleopatra and I'd have Razia Sultana. She was the ruler of the Delhi Sultanate in the 13th century or the 12th century. And um, there's not loads of information about her, but she seemed like a pretty badass woman. And then I'd also have Boudicca there as well. And I would just love to speak to those three women about their lives and their kind of like day-to-day -day experiences of what it was like to be them. Okay, this is cool. Do you reckon that there would be a particular tent or section where it is a place to chat. I wouldn't really want any tents there or anything because I, I just feel like I want everything to be open and inclusive. And so maybe there's some sort of natural meeting point, like a discussion point, maybe just like a clearing in the trees that we could sit in, something like that. Or maybe down by the water, there'd be a nice spot to sit in as well. That sounds lovely. What about beverages? Do we get anything to quench our thirst? Well, I mean, I don't drink alcohol, so I'm always on the lookout for the best non-alcoholic beverages. And I have to say that my favourite drink is water. So, <laughs> Is it? That's amazing. Yeah, of course. It's the most thirst-quenching drink and the most satisfying. So you just have like a water bar maybe with all different types of mineral water. And then what else? I would have like hibiscus juice and hibiscus tea. So you could have it hot or cold, like the best coffee the best non-alcoholic cocktails so mm. like virgin pina colada virgin bloody mary and virgin mojito i like all of those three and then maybe just really nice tea selection as well of like fresh herbal teas just keeping it fresh and healthy okay so we've got lots of music happening but are there any other types of live performance it's kind of like a natural organic party so Perhaps we are just like finding our space in the naturist abundance that we have. Or are you going to showcase anything else in terms of performance? Well, there'd be music performance for sure. But in terms of other kinds of art, maybe I would have my favourite ever visual artist, which is Jean-Michel Basquiat. And again, he's just someone that I wish I could talk to because... His life experience, I think, must have been so surreal. And, you know, even now, he is the only artist of colour that's kind of, like, put on a pedestal along with, like, the other great 20th century artists. But then the way his life ended as well was just so lonely and tragic. And then it makes you kind of question his whole... Not his own existence as an artist, but maybe the way that he was received by his peers and the community in which he operated and lived in and how much did those people really care about him. And it, it makes me feel so sad when I think about it. And he's the only person whose paintings have made me cry. And I went to visit his grave in New York and that was really a moving experience for me as well. So I'd want him to be there and I'd want him to have whatever he wanted to paint. And maybe he'd be painting whilst people were hanging out if he felt like it or if not maybe he was just hanging out and I just want him there and then the other person I'd have not really performance wise but just to be there would be Bruce Lee because he's my other hero and someone who died too young as well I really love martial arts and I do karate and, and 
I feel like if I just got one crash course lesson from him and just sort of like, sort of spirituality and outlook and the best way to do things, it would just, it would be a game changer. So yeah, I'd ask him to be there. Maybe he could do some Kung Fu for us as well. I feel like there'd be so many people, even if they've never done it before, would just be like, yeah, we're in this incredible setting. The tunes are amazing. I'm energised from all the refreshments. The food's been tasty. Here we go. I'm ready to become a Kung Fu master. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the whole point of everything there would just be like having people around who are symbols of just like supreme creativity and focus and dedication, whether it's like, you know, to a physical art like martial arts in terms of Bruce Lee or whether it's music or painting or thinking, whatever it is. So I just want it to feel really inspirational overall. Do you think it's possible for us to live in our dream spaces? Yeah, for some people, not everyone. Um, (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I guess the whole point of dreams is that they exist in another realm and it's like an ideal situation and an ideal world and it's what you fantasise about. And then, I don't know, maybe the people who even have the ability to create those situations for them, I don't know how they feel. Do they then fantasise about other things? I mean, I'd like to think that you can make your dreams a reality, but I don't know if it if you can. But I think the most important thing is just reaching a point in your mind where you feel satisfied and you feel calm. And I think that's probably one of the most difficult things for people to do. It's like everyone's always on a quest to get to that point, but then maybe sometimes we're already at that point without realizing it. And so it's just about like having that level of self-awareness where you realize that you are in an amazing position and you are lucky and you're blessed. And that means different things for different people. It's not just like a one size fits all. That's the joy of conversation. It's about being able to dream and to explore with that comfort of no wrong or right or the yeah. exact answer. And that's what I think you've created in this dream space. You know, we're really relaxed. <laughs> And, and we get to, to chill and to chat. Do you think that your practice of metaphysical kind of sense, like in terms of martial arts and a more Eastern discipline, infuses into your practice as an art maker? I'd say definitely. There's like things that I appreciate so much about like the physical act of like karate training, you know, like when I'm in the dojo and you're there doing the moves, like even though the training is really intense, but whenever I go in there, the way, you know, for those like few hours that you're there doing the training session, you're all you're thinking about is like your body and your muscles and your physical movement and your breathing And even though you're like (laughs) being pushed to the absolute extreme physically, but like the whole thing feels so good mentally. I've always felt like even growing up, like doing a lot of sport alongside everything else, like physical activity is so important in terms of mental activity. Because I feel like the more that you move your body and and like stay fit and healthy that way, the better it is for your mind when it comes to then doing like creative or academic work, for example. And I'm now grateful by proxy that I get to have this masterclass of Bruce Lee in your dreams <laughs> in ancient Egypt alongside Cleopatra. <laughs> Sorry, this might be one of the most random dream scenarios that anyone's ever come up with. <laughs> There's no such thing. This is a dream. Dreams are random, you know. <laughs> it can go in any direction you want it to. Are there any other objects or things or part of the visual, the set, the feeling, the decorations that we can see? I'd want the set to just be natural, you know, just for us to be in like a beautiful, natural setting. I feel like those are the moments where you're most in awe when you're just in somewhere that's so absolutely beautiful. And then you just get reminded of how amazing the world is. So I'd want us to be somewhere like that. But then, I don't know, at the same time, 
there is so much to appreciate about human creativity and objects and what man is able to make and so I guess like maybe there would be a space where I could pick out some of the most beautiful things I've ever seen and just have them there but I don't know if it would work because it's out of context I think we'd get all the beauty we need from the nature around us so maybe we'll just stick to that yeah do we wear anything in particular I feel like I want to build my confidence as I arrive into this space by feeling like I'm wrapped in something or wearing the right thing on my body well I mean I guess like you know we could have a dress code where it's like yeah dress up if you want to but I just want everyone to feel good so really the bottom line would be everyone can just wear whatever they want I just feel like the world we live in there's just so much of it like cacophony about what people should and shouldn't wear and like what it means if you see someone wearing a certain thing and then it all just ties into like racism or Islamophobia or objectification and all of these things and at the end of the day I'm just like who cares like just let people wear whatever they want to wear and so that would just be the dress code I'd say but I mean I'd say like feel free to like wear your best ever outfit if you want to I'd get dressed up for sure yeah I would as well I think I think I want flowers in my hair yeah why not (laughs) which I know is a cliche but like a huge one it's a massive hibiscus I'm picking up on a space that feels filled with serenity and you've mentioned resurrecting some of these souls that we know to be archived is quite troubled from Jean-Michel Basquiat to someone like Boudicca who had quite a tough life Is this a healing space? Does it provide some kind of nourishment and sanctity? Um, Yeah, definitely. And not just healing, but just the place where everything feels calm and easy and beautiful. And I don't want anyone to worry about anything when they come into the space, you know, and I want them, everyone to feel free and easy so that they can open up and they can talk about whatever they want to talk about but also at the same time if they don't feel like talking and they just feel like chilling then that's totally fine as well and no one's they I don't want them to feel paranoid about like not talking enough or anything like that you know I just want it to be a space that caters for all the feelings of how people might be in a social scenario and yeah for it to just feel good and wholesome Nabiha, that was so soothing. What a wholesome, perhaps the first wholesome dream space that we've had. And I love it. I can feel the light wrapping around me with gorgeous sounds. Thank you so much. I'm Gemma Kearney and you've been listening to Dream Space from Factory International. Today you heard Nabir's vision and you can join us next time as our next guest takes us on a journey around their dream space. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure that you like and subscribe to this podcast. Your support always means a lot. And if you can't wait until the next one, you can head to Factory International's website to find more exciting artistic content on Factory Plus. And if you missed any earlier episodes, you can find them there too. See you next time. Dream Space was hosted by me, Gemma Kearney, and the series is produced by Tess Davidson and Katie Callan, with sound design by Femi Oriogan Williams and theme music by Carmel Smickersgill. The executive producer is Dan Jackson, and it is a reduced listening production for Factory International, curated by Scott Smith and Alex Mannion-Jones.